it's Regina and I am alone this is a little awkward for me because I get a little self-conscious when I am when I'm when I'm speaking by myself I'm very used to Sabrina being with me if you've been watching our channel then you know that Sabrina and I started Kate Arlings uh, together we're twins and I am a minute older if you watch our videos I probably seem like the more extroverted twin out of the two of us. I do a lot of talking, um, but actually in reality, when she's, it's almost, it's, this is going to sound incredibly strange, but when she and I are together, I draw strength from that. So when she's here, I'm very, very talkative. When it's just me by myself, I tend to be a lot more quieter and introverted. So we wanted to do some get to know you videos, each of us by ourselves, the ladies of K-Darlings. So if you're watching this, know that there are also two other videos that are up. One where you get to know a little bit more about Sabrina and one where you get to know a little bit about our friend BJ who does a Sunday segment on our channel called Chair Dancing with BJ. She is one of my closest friends. My name is Regina. So I am one of the founders of K Darlings. My sister and I started the channel because we have very different personalities, uh, very different interests, but the one thing that we shared in common was our love of uh, K-dramas, Korean music, things like that. We have very different uh, hobbies and personalities outside of that, so we wanted to do something together. It was something we could share together, something we could do together, so we started a blog, which we don't really go on anymore, but the blog was actually for drama reviews, and we wrote up some reviews and we put them on the blog. Uh, the blog is still up, but we really don't post on it anymore. Uh, one day I said, let's do it for the channel. So the channel is actually supposed to be drama reviews. And we haven't done any drama reviews. <laughs> we, um, we are going to be doing drama reviews coming up, so be on the lookout for those. But the day that we started the channel, BTS was in the U.S. They're one of my favorite groups, and they were on Good Morning America. And I said, let's watch... Let's film ourselves watching them on Good Morning America. It's the most awkward video you've ever seen, by the way, um, because it was our first. And it sort of catapulted into this musical journey because we got so many requests for music, which was so amazing because we're already fans of so many different types of music. And then this gave us an introduction to groups we didn't know quite as much about. So quite as much about. I tend to, two things you'll notice about me, I tend to stumble over my words and I tend to talk a little fast. I tend to talk, let's make that three things. I tend to talk with my hands a lot. But also, uh, you'll notice out of the three women on the channel, I am always the least dressed. <laughs> this sounds really terrible. <laughs> I am not a dress up kind of person. Never really have been. Uh, if I'm not at work, more than likely, 80% of the time, I'm gonna have no makeup on and no bra on. Getting real, getting real here. Just getting real here. Uh, so, a little bit about me. I figure probably the easiest way to get to know me is to get to know me through music um, because it has played such a large role in my life from the very get-go, from the beginning. Um, when I was younger, uh, my sister and I, well, through books and music, through writing, because my job outside of the channel is as a writer. I am writer R.K. Riles. I have 23 books out. 23 of mine solo. I have two co-written projects and then I have a couple of novellas with a publishing company. Uh, I am also currently writing a co-written book and a co-written screenplay with BJ from Chair Dancing with BJ. I'm going to be visiting her actually coming up in September and we're going to be working on those co-written projects together in Phoenix and we're also going to attend the Baby Metal concert which I'm really excited about. I really don't know that much about that group so she's going to be introducing me to that and I'm really excited to to check them out. Um, but yes, I write under, this is actually one of my books. My cover artist made this or one of my cover artists made this. It's kind of big so I don't know if you can see it. It's called Hawthorne Heathcliff. Two names that didn't belong to us, two shoes that did. Out of all the 23 books, it's the only one of mine that's ever hit a bestseller list. It was the Amazon bestselling list. It has not hit NYT or the other, but like, um, I'd love for that to happen. But to get you into my head a little bit, I'll tell you, um, let's see, where I was in my head when I wrote this book. Um, this is one of the lines from it. Faces leave, 
shoes walk away. You learn a lot about people by what they wear on their feet. I'd rather see what's going to leave than what I'd miss if it left. There's another one. I think your heart will learn. The heart can't be broken if you don't let it break. Let it. People are so afraid of being broken that they don't allow themselves to learn from the pain. The heart can't be taught if you don't give it something to learn. Sometimes love isn't forever. Sometimes it's just moments in your life that teach you. If it's the forever after kind of love, it'll find you again. If it isn't, don't let a broken heart break you. Let it make you love harder. Love is a mistake worth making. I listened to a lot of country music while writing that book. I really don't know why it was country music that inspired that one, but it did. There's never been a moment in my life that I can think of where I haven't wanted to be a writer or haven't written words. I started writing when I was very, very little. We were, my sister and I grew up in Mississippi under the poverty level. So we were actually homeless when we were younger, lived in our car for a little while. Um, our parents left us at our grandparents for a little while. So there was a time where we were just sort of in this, this hole where we really didn't know where we belonged. And, um, were sometimes when we didn't belong to anybody but each other. And my mom got us a library card and we didn't really have access to television, especially when we were in our car, things like that. So books opened up this whole entire new world for me and this whole new passion for uh, storytelling. And I started writing when I was old enough to hold a pen or a pencil. I actually won my first poetry contest when I was in the third grade. I uh, remember one of my earliest poems, uh, not third grade, this was when I was older, was a poem that I wrote while listening. I always write to music. Uh, music just inspires me. The sound of music. I sang when I was younger. Um, I used to sing on stage solo by myself when I was a little girl. As I got older, I joined a competition choir when I was in high school. But then I battled anorexia and bulimia. They call it bulimorexia. It's where you start out as anorexic and sort of segue into bulimia. And it sort of destroyed my voice. So I haven't sung in years. If I do sing, I sing at home. I don't really sing outside or in the public. But uh, music has always been something that I've been very, 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 very fond of. And because of that, I've always used it as a backtrack when writing. I'm very inspired by it. Uh, one of the first poems that I ever wrote, um, not third grade, it's a whole other ball game. Was called um, "I See," and it was written when I was listening to J.C. Chazes from NSYNC. Yeah, singing "Runaway Train," and I think that was like back in his Mickey Mouse Club days. <laughs> and uh, I remember the first couple lines of that poem. I think I only remember the first two lines. Was I look into the eyes of the world, and what do I see? I see the eyes of the world looking back at me. The only poem of mine that I have memorized, the only one that I can remember off the top of my head completely, was one about uh, time. And it was called, it went, ludicrous is he, a tyrant that rules the past you see. Smug is she, a ruler of nowaday forever to be. Enchanting will be the child, future's eaves hanging from her hair so wild. And though we know them not by name, we know their anger, their fire, their flame. We walk a milestone so as not to be heard. They're discreet and haunting ancient words. A harp is played, not by talent, but by ear, as is this legend of a day, week, month, and year. I can't tell you that much about that poem, I guess. It was a very dark time, and I was really angry with uh, my past, my present, and my future, and that's sort of where that one came from. But yes, um, I've always written. I, I take a musical journey and with both writing and with artwork. I used to draw when I was younger, too. These are middle school drawings, so I apologize now. My dad was an artist, so I have this genuine love for um, art, for music, uh, for writing, and a passion. I like to for them to all sort of come together into one. When um, I was writing a book called In the Land of Tea and Ravens, I actually wrote a song. It was my first time dabbling in songwriting. I've dabbled in poetry for years. I wrote for a... Um, newspaper when I was in high school, wrote essays in college, and then switched to fiction writing. I write in three different genres. I write contemporary romance, paranormal romance, and epic fantasy. And, dragons. and uh, um, but 
the first time I dabbled and the only time I've dabbled in songwriting was when I wrote the Raven song for my book In the Land of Tea and Ravens and uh, I did a full collaboration project with a musician and with an artist for that. Uh, I'll actually link in the description all of my personal links, my personal Twitter, my author page, my author YouTube. I do have an author YouTube. I haven't done much with it. Um, I plan to do something with it. It's got two of my book trailers on there. One of the book trailers is actually the song that I wrote for the book. I wrote the lyrics and then the artist, an artist named Nicole Willard, she ended up arranging the music and then she sang it in the studio in Canada. And then we um, collaborated with an artist friend of mine named Melissa Wright, who's gonna be doing some artwork for this channel, by the way. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. And uh, we, we did this full collaboration project where we put the, the lyrics, the music that Nicole arranged and the her vocals because Nicole also sang it and Melissa's artwork together into a book trailer so um, I'm not sure how impressive that song is but if you want to listen to it I'll link it in the description down below and that is that is my only foray, foray into the music industry <laughs> um, outside of being a writer I'm a mom I have three daughters um, and all of them are involved in something artistically, except my youngest, who's a full on tomboy. She has a nine year old tomboy. All she wants to do is be outside all the time, uh, fishing, riding four wheelers, things like that. So she is a, she's a full on tomboy. My oldest sings and she's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful singer. She does competition show choir. So she sings and she dances. My middle daughter is an actress. Don't know how we ended up doing that. <laughs> We stumbled into it on accident. She really liked the idea of the industry and she liked the idea of, she she's done so much ballet, gymnastics, things like that, but she ended up wanting to do something that was um, like on television. She was fascinated by TV and the acting on television. So somehow we ended up stumbling into the actual industry. And so she has actually done a television show um, some movies, some commercials, things like that. So I help manage. So I drive a lot. I drive a lot with her. I travel a lot with her and I travel a lot for my, um, writing. And then I also, um, work a lot of part-time jobs on the side. So, um, I like working part-time jobs. Let me tell you why. I like to people watch. I like to just be involved with other people's lives. I learn a lot about people through being around people but I'm one of the shyest people you will ever meet in public I can talk good on camera but as soon as the camera goes off and I'm face to face with you it's going to be a couple of meetings before you even hardly get a high out of me I'm that shy in person so I've been talking for 13 minutes and I promise to keep these videos at least 15 minutes long so let's talk about my favorite music um and favorite biases and favorite dramas and things like that um it would take me forever to list it because I have like a hundred, hundreds and hundreds of favorite movies, hundreds of favorite dramas, hundreds of favorite musicians. So I'm just going to say that I started out with a love of Japanese animation. As, as you can probably tell, I have some Sailor Moon stuff behind me. Yep. I don't have any other stuff because it's hard to find stuff here. Like I have to order anything else. But... Which segued into um, Japanese live action films because I actually started watching Japanese movies that were based on animes. That's where my love for Kento Yamazaki was born, y'all. He's one of my favorite Japanese actors of all time. I have a lot of favorite Japanese actors, but he's one of them. Um, and then it just sort of translated into Japanese dramas and into other Japanese movies. And then into Japanese music, which then segued into K-dramas, which then segued into K-pop because I heard some of the OSTs, some of the solo Korean artists and then some of the uh, K-pop artists like B2B who did an OST for I think Cinderella and Four Nights was one of the first groups that I ever got into listening to wise. And then I just started sort of going from there. Um, added, started adding stuff to my playlist for writing. And then that's where. Now the channel has introduced us to so many more new artists and to, um, to other amazing songs. Most of the time when I heard songs, I would just download them to my playlist for writing. So it, I didn't really go out there and watch the music videos and get to know the artists as much as I wanted to. So the channel has really allowed me to do that in a way that I hadn't done before. I just had the songs on my playlist. Um, so yeah, so it's been an interesting journey.
I'm so grateful to all of you, seriously, for, I did not think when we started the channel, and we do have K-dramas coming, and we have Japanese drama reviews coming, and BL reviews coming, because I'm a big fan of BL dramas, a big fan of BL dramas, Japanese dramas, um, K-dramas, Thai dramas, Taiwanese dramas, you name it, I'm a fan of it, so you're going to see uh, a lot of these reviews popping up as we go. Um, I'm currently watching uh, four dramas at once, a Chinese drama, a Taiwanese drama, um, a Thai BL drama, and a um, K-drama. Four. I'm a multitasker. <laughs> when I'm not writing. When I'm not writing and listening to music. I multitask dramas. I watch like, and unlike Sabrina and BJ, which you'll learn this about them, is I am really into emotional dramas. And I mean, I love them all. I like all the romantic ones. I like the HEAs. But mine do not have to have an HEA. Like I really get, I really get involved in the angstier sort of storylines and the emotional, emotional dramas. There was one Japanese drama that I watched um, that is one of my all-time favorite Japanese dramas. And it's like 300 episodes long. Kid you not, it's like a really, really long drama. And it's called Mare. One of the stars of that was Kento Yamazaki. And it took you on like this entire journey of the female actress through her entire life. And it's one of the most beautiful dramas I've seen. Seriously, one of the most amazing dramas. Um, it's it's a it's a commitment because it's a lot of episodes, but it was a really 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 incredible incredible drama. Seriously, I could talk about that, but since this is not a drama review and this is a get to know you video, I'll uh, I'll try to hold off on that. <laughs> but um, yes, my sister and I we live in Mississippi which you probably already know that um, this, this video is going to be all over the place because I'm not really sure what I've already said and what I still need to say, but we live in a small town in Mississippi, um, very small town. I should probably show you like my backyard. Yeah, let's do that. Welcome to my backyard. I literally live in the middle of nowhere, but it's a pretty middle of nowhere. And I am a huge nature lover, so it's, it's sort of like the perfect, perfect inspirational place for me. I'm seriously and incredibly inspired by nature. My backyard. Um, I'm very inspired by nature. I like to take photographs of nature. Um, I've always been really, really, really into uh, nature as a whole. So I'll take long walks sometimes, listening to music. Um, when I get blocked on writing, I take showers and I go outside. Is that weird? I don't know. Like, for some reason, being in the bathtub or uh, being outside really inspires me, So, along with music. So, I have a tendency to do that if I get blocked in my writing. But, um, so yeah, so that's a little bit about me. I don't know how... Y'all don't laugh because I feel like, yeah, seriously, don't laugh. That's very different looking then. I've seen your portrait. Yeah, I've changed a lot. I really don't know what color that hair is. I used to dye my hair like a ton of different colors back then. Well, with what I could get away with in school. Yeah. Anyhow. I feel like I should probably list some of my favorite uh, groups and biases. Getting into K-pop, one of my favorite groups was um, was was FT Island and BTS. Um, they were two of my favorite groups when I first got into the actual genre. Um, and it's uh, now it's sort of catapulted into this whole whole list. But some of my favorite vocalists, um, ultimate biases of uh, vocalists, whatever you would like to call them, are. Um, Lee Hong Gi of FT Island, Onu from Shiny, love his vocals. Um, I'm a big fan of Jimin from BTS, um, Baco from New West. Uh, I really like Woozy from Seventeen. Um, I didn't really make cards or lists, so I, I'm gonna go blank now that I'm talking to the camera. Um, but there's, I have a whole list. It's like it's it's a hundred long. I've really gotten into. We were introduced to the band Mayday, um, to watching you. Uh, to Dimash recently and I've become I'm a real big fan of the way they tell stories like 
all three are such incredible storytellers. And, it, and if you know from watching this video and the way that I like to tell stories and the way that I incorporate art and music and things, those three artists have really been speaking to me lyric wise and voice wise and storyteller wise because I know that with Mayday, their lyrics are just absolutely incredible. Uh, Fatih and you and Dimash are incredible storytellers with their voice and, and arrangements. So um, they're, they're newer artists to me, but they're fast becoming my, my favorites. So I have um, a whole whole list of artists that not only that I'm fans of but that we've been introduced to that we've gotten to know um, and I'm really 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 into trying to get the names of the rookie groups we just did a reaction to D once and I was really 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 impressed with them I'm interested to see what they're gonna do if there's anything I left out that you'd like to know let me know in the comments and we'll be I'll be glad to make another video um, as a matter of fact, all of us would be glad to make another video. So be on the lookout for BJ's video and Sabrina's video. And if you look in the description, we'll make sure that we link all of our, uh, all of our personal accounts, all of our personal author accounts, if we have them, um, all of our, um, YouTube channels, if we have them. I do have an author YouTube. I think BJ has an author YouTube. Uh, Sabrina is also a writer, but I don't know if she has an author YouTube. I'll find out though and link that. Be on the lookout for some new stuff on the channel as well. Sabrina and I have been talking, and of course we've been talking with BJ as well. We want to add, uh, we want to get our drama reviews up. We want to get our BL reviews up. We want to get, um, we have some author friends in the author industry who are all really into K-pop, and we thought about adding an interview segment where we talk to them about what inspires them, uh, and things like that. So if we get that added, look for that. We would also all really, 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 really love to get to a point in this channel where we get to meet and interview some of the artists that we are becoming huge fans of. Like we would really love, because we, we want to do more concert vlogs, travel to different concerts as we're able to, and then we'd like to get to a point where we actually get to meet these artists, talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, talk about um, what it is that makes them passionate about the music they do, um, if they are songwriters, what inspires them, things like that. So hopefully we get to that point. Hopefully we get enough um, enough interest in the channel, enough interest in what we do, that we get to a point where we're able to, to do that. That would be amazing. That would be incredible. So, so yeah, so that would be, that would be really great. Uh, but that is, I am, uh, so that's, that's me. I'm Regina. I'm the older twin by a minute. One of the founders of K Darlings, a writer, a mom, a general, just all around music fan, all around um, art fan. I really love art. I really love music. Uh, really, to be honest, those three things really shape me. They really shape who I am as a person. Music, writing, and art. There's not been a time that those three things have not merged in my life. I've always scribbled and like sketched. I've always been writing something. I've always been reading. Um, and music has always been there in the background. Started out as a singer, a singer and writer. And uh, when, when I had the damage to my, to my throat, to my voice, um, I concentrated 100% on writing, but never lost that love of music and never lost um, wanting to take that journey with music. So if you're watching this and you're watching K Darlings, we call ourselves K Darlings, but we're really interested in everything, every genre, every artist, every everything. And we can't thank you enough for the love you've shown us, for the love you've shown the channel, and for the love that you've shown um, the music that we've reacted to, and hopefully the love you'll show for the other stuff that we do coming up in the future uh, we, we appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I was trying to think of, a, of, of a different ways to say thank you. Uh, I can say gracias, uh, consamnida, um, arigato. Um, I don't really know any other way to say thank you in another language. I wish I knew how to say thank you in a thousand languages. Um, but thank you. Thank you seriously so much for all the love that you've shown me. All the love you've shown Sabrina, all the love you've shown BJ. As you know, we're three, three very, very, very different personalities. Uh, Sabrina and I, you'll see us pretty much every day. 
because we try to get together as often as possible. We live literally within five minutes of each other. Uh, so when we're not working, we're together. And we try to do some, some um, we try to film for y'all as often as possible. So um, you'll see us quite often doing reactions, um, reviews, things like that. You'll see BJ on Sundays during her Sunday segment. Occasionally she'll be doing new releases uh, because we all have the same artist. Sometimes we'll react to the same video and the same artist. So um, when we do that, um, our videos will go up the same day. So be on the lookout for that because I know that we get requests sometimes for the same artists and we try to do those, um, like uh, we try to get those up same day if possible. So be on the lookout for just anything from her, from us, and I'm an advocate as well. I'm a big advocate for, um, because of my own history, I'm a big advocate toward bullying, um, anti-bullying, um, eating disorders, uh, the LGBT community, um, big advocate for autism because of my niece, and uh, just these are literacy I would like to get in my state. The literacy is, is not great. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of my books that I use all the royalties for to go towards those foundations, foundations that help with literacy, foundations that help with local theater, foundations that help with uh, anti-bullying campaigns, foundations that help with eating disorders, foundations that help with autism awareness. Uh, I have, even have a book that used to be all the pro the funds for that book would go to uh, those foundations, but now this book is free. It's free for anyone to read. It's called The Story of Awkward, and I made it free because I wanted it to be a gift to people who struggle with, uh, with self-esteem, with issues with bullying, issues with uh, just not loving themselves the way that they should. It's called The Story of Awkward. It's available on Amazon and all other outlets, iTunes, you name it. And it's just a story about, it's based on a true story, but it's done in a fairy tale kind of way. Um, and of course it's got some romance in it, but uh, which is not so much the true story part, but the, the true story is just about this girl who goes on a journey to find herself and she finds herself through her own artwork, which is sort of in a way my story because I was bullied very heavily and I fought an eating disorder and I discovered and healed myself through my own journey with words, with art, and with music. So, um, that's me. That's Regina. I hope you enjoy watching the channel. I hope you enjoy seeing us enjoy music. I hope you enjoy seeing us enjoy dramas as we drop those. I hope you enjoy seeing us at concerts and hopefully one day enjoy watching us meeting the artists that we all know and love. And uh, seriously, thank you for watching. I love you.